Hello, welcome to Arlington Public Library's reading of 14 by Alice Gerstenberg. Note, this act was once originally published in the February issue of Drama Magazine in 1920. It is now a public domain work and may be performed with characters, Mrs. Horace Pringle, a woman of fashion, played by Tamara Miller. Elaine, her debutante daughter, played by Leslie Hinosa. And Dunham, the butler or maid, played by me, Miranda Want. I will also be reading stage directions. Scene, the dining room of a New York residence. A long table running from left to right, with a chair at each end and six chairs on each side, is set elaborately for 14. The butler is hovering over the table to give it a few finishing touches as Mrs. Pringle comes in. She is a woman of fashion, handsome, and wears a very lovely evening gown. She is rather excitable in temperament, but withal capable and executive, vivacious and humorously charming. She enters in haste, carrying a corsage bouquet of flowers and the empty box of paper from which she has unwrapped them. Dunham, I've just had word from Mr. Harper that he was called away to the bedside of a friend who is very ill. He sent me these flowers. Oh, it's a good thing he did. I don't approve of young men refusing dinner invitations at the last minute. I'll take the box and paper, Mrs. Pringle. Well, it's too bad. After you've said it so beautifully, and it's getting so late. Some might be coming any moment. How's the cook? Cook's in a temper, as always, madam. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the temper, the better the performance. <laughs> as long as she serves as good a dinner, I don't care how much she swears. The rest of you can just keep out of her way. Where's Gustav? I'm sorry to have to say it, madam, but there's such an awful blizzard out, he's sweeping off the sidewalk. Oh, well, dear me, yes. I should have ordered an awning, but who expected a storm like this? She glances out the window. Elaine, a young debutante in evening gown, comes running in with a bunch of place cards. Here are the place cards, mother, and a diagram. Shall I put them around? Uh, y y yes, Elaine. I'm going to look after your father. He's so helpless about his ties. Remove one plate, Dunham. Remove one plate, madam? Oh, madam, it is a certainty? You would sit with down with 13. 13? Oh, why, well, you're right, 13. We could never sit down with 13. That's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend, nothing. He's just one of those careless men who never answer their invitations in time. His flowers, indeed, to make him, me forgive him? Oh, now look at the trouble he's put me to. Thirteen. I wonder who I could get to come in the last minute. Oh, quick, Elaine, help me think. She There's rushes always... to the telephone and looks madly through her list of acquaintances. There's always Uncle George. Well, he never opens his head. Mr. Morgan, madam, he always tells a joke or two. <gasps> Why, yes, Dunham, that's clever of you. <clears throat> Hello, Central Lakeview 5971, at once, please. Oh, Elaine, dear, your hair's much too tight. Pull it out, pull it out. C come here. Uh, oh, Mr. Morgans. Uh, well, yes, this is Miss Pringle speaking from across the street. When Mr. Morgan comes in, please tell him to call me up right away. I want him to come dine with us in about 10 minutes. Uh, you expect him? <sighs> have him, oh, have him call me right away. <laughs> now, he shouldn't get it. Then what will, what, what if he shouldn't get it? Then what will we do? Well, Mother, I don't have to be at the table. It's your party anyway. Everybody's married and older than I am. Didn't I put you next to Oliver Farnsworth? Millions. He's worth millions. Well, he won't be giving me any. Can't he marry you? Aren't you going to try to make a good match for yourself? I fling every eligible man I can at your head. Can't you finish the rest yourself? It's no use, Mother. You're trying to marry me off to anyone as important as he is. 
He frightens me to death. I lose my tongue. I'm afraid of him as I'd be afraid of the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales. Oh, what wouldn't I give to have the Prince of Wales in my house? New York has lost its heart to them. I was just telling Mr. Farnsworth yesterday that I'd give anything to have the prince here. I would establish, it would establish my social position for life. Oh, and I've had such a reputation for being a wonderful hostess. Ring, ring. Oh, dear me, the telephone. <clears throat> Hello, Mrs. Tickwick. Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. What? No, oh, caught in a snowdrift. Can't you get another car? Uh, <clears throat> good. The widow, uh, <clears throat> good. The widow can't come. That leaves us 12. Remove two plates, Denham. Oh, that's a shame. I'm heartbroken. Oh, my dear, how can we get along without you? But have you really tried? Oh, I'm reduced to tears. Goodbye, dear. Has Mr. Morgan come in yet? Well, I'm glad she dropped out. Central, give me Lakeview 5971. Dunham, with two less, can you save two cocktails and, and at least four glasses of champagne? <clears throat> uh, has Mr. Morgan come in yet? Uh, well, don't give him the message. I, I telephoned for about crossing the street to Mrs. Pringle's for dinner. It's too late. You understand? Well, anyway, I've invited Clem, returned my indebtedness to save my champagne besides. <clears throat> the liquor is getting low, madam. What with prohibition and entertaining so much? Mother, if you only have 12 people, father can't sit at the head of the table. But he has to sit at the head. It looks too undignified of the man of the house is pushed to the side. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. How absurd. Always forget. Of course, 12 is an impossible number. Oh, I don't want to put any of these women at the head. There's Mrs. Darby. Oh, such a cat. I wouldn't give her the hone. And, and Mrs. Oh, <clears throat> answer it, Dunham. Hello, Mrs. Pringle's residence. A message? Yes, sir. What, sir? Mr. Darby, the doctor says your baby has the chicken pox. Chicken pox? Elaine, mother. Yes, sir. Oh. <sighs> his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, Mr. and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret, and also their house guest, Mr. and Mrs. Fleetwood. That's four out. Then you're only eight. Quick, the plates, Dunham. She begins to remove chairs and gathers up silver and plates feverishly. Mrs. Pringle getting more and more distraught helps. With so much unaccustomed help, Dunham gets confused and goes through many unnecessary motions, removes plates, breaks them, drops silver, aimlessly trying to hurry, his fingers all thumbs. Don't we know someone at the last minute? The Howards. Oh, they don't serve drinks when they entertain. I can't afford to invite them to drink mine. The Greens? Oh, she's not interesting enough. Mr. Conley. He never makes a dinner call, even all the, after all the times I've invited him. Hester Longley? Not at the same table with you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's far too pretty, too clever. <clears throat> Where's our book? The Tuppers. The Tuppers? Good heavens, Elaine Six in the family. That would get us back to 14. Then father could sit at the head of the table. Ugh, well, try them. I'll rush and tell your father to hold up the drawing room. She exits left. Ridgeway 9325. This is Elaine Pringle. What Tupper am I speaking to? 
Oh, Ella, hello. I hope you haven't finished your dinner. We had a party arranged here in the last moment. Everybody's been dropping out. The blizzard. Can't you flock your family around the corner and eat with us? Mother and I thought we knew you well enough to call you like this at the seventh hour. You would? Oh, fine. Six more plates. What? Oh, well, but Dunham, get mother quick. Yes, yes, of course. Love it. Why, certainly. Hello? Great Caesar, now what have I done? What's the matter? Elaine, what is... Now I've done it. I've just done it, but I couldn't get out of it. I just couldn't. You weren't here. I always lose my head and bungle things. But what? Don't keep us waiting like this. What is it? I invited Ella and the family and she accepted and then she said they had two guests and it, it would be all right. And of course I said it would. And now we're 16. <sighs> Sixteen, but madam, the table's not that long. Elaine, just like you. No tact, no worldly wisdom. Oh, if I'd been on the phone, I'd have politely said that my table... But you weren't at the phone. You ought to attend to such messages yourself. You know, I always lose my head. But the dishes, madam, and we only have 14 squabs. I won't eat any. But I must be not be disgraced. We'll have to make the best of it and, and insert another board. Dunham goes out. Mrs. Pringle and Elaine hurriedly remove part of the tablecloth. But mother, I needn't sit at the table. You're going to sit next to Oliver Farnsworth. Now I don't want to wish to hear another word about it. But can't we squeeze them in without all the work of adding another board? If I move the plates and chairs closer. Have you forgotten that Mr. Tupper weighs something like 250 pounds? And Mrs. Conley has no waistline. It, it can't be done. Cook is in a rage, madam. She says she is only prepared for 14. I can't help it. She'll have to prepare for 16. Tell her to open the cans of soups and vegetables and... But the ice cream forms and the gelatin molds. I'll pretend I don't like them. And I'll pretend I'm on a diet. But I really wouldn't have to sit at the table. Be still. Ring, ring. The, oh, the telephone. Now what? D d don't answer it. It's driving me mad. Ring, ring. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. Oh, yes, Jessica. W what? The blizzard? You're cold? Too dangerous? <gasps> oh, Jessica, you poor dear. Yes, your husband's right. It would be foolhardy. Put on a mustard plaster. Hot toddy, go to bed. So sorry. Oh, there. That's wonderful. Now we're just 14. But the cards are all wrong. Only six are coming who were invited originally. You'll have to make another diagram. How do you want them seated? Uh, give them to me. He remains at the telephone table where there's a pad and a pencil and makes a new diagram. What a mess. I've spent hours over that diagram. So much depends upon having guests seated harmoniously. Oh, there's the front doorbell. Dunham, I've told Annie to answer them for you, but, but go peek into the drawing room and tell me who it is. Ring, ring. You murderous instrument. Now what? Hello? Mr. Farnsworth, Mr. Oliver Farnsworth, uh, no, oh, you're his secretary, he's what? Instructed you to make his excuses? Oliver Farnsworth, oh, uh, he had to leave for Boston at once on very important business? Oh, <laughs> how dare he? How dare he? The last moment like this? 
and such a hostess's feelings, no regards for the effort she goes to to provide an evening's enjoyment, and such a good dinner I planned, and he promised me he would come. Business. Ah, uh, I don't believe it. He didn't want to exert himself. He was afraid of freezing in the blizzard. Ah, uh, as if he didn't have half a dozen limousines to carry him to the door. Selfishness, downright rudeness, and worth millions. Just a match for you, Elaine. Uh, and I was abound you would uh, meet him and sit next to him at the table. And, and now I don't know when I can give you a chance like that again. I'm perfectly furious. I'll never speak to him again. I won't be treated this way. Perhaps he really did have business and was called away. And I, one of the most important hostesses in this city, people clamoring to receive my invitations. All of my affairs are a success. I insist they shall be. I can't bear a failure. I won't have a failure. Oh, he was my most important guest. He's such a man's man, so important financially. Every other man considers it an honor to meet him. And now not coming, I'm furious, furious. It's all this damnable blizzard. Now, I will have to say, away from the table, his not coming makes us 13 again. Just go to bed. Go up to the nursery. I'll send you milk and crackers. But mother, it's not my fault he had business out of town. Yes, it is. If you'd perk up a bit and not be so timid and make something of yourself, he would hear about your attractions from other men and be curious to see you himself. Oh, what a family I have. No one to help me with my ambitions. Go to bed. I certainly won't sit down to 13. Go to bed. Get out of my sight. Madam enters from left. It was Mr. Morgan, madam. Mr. Morgan? But I delivered his maid to tell him not to come. He couldn't have received a second message, madam, for I heard him explain to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your telephone invitation. That makes you 13 again, unless you don't want me to go to bed. Of course I don't want you to go to bed. You're back to where we started, 14, Dunham. I'll get the cocktails ready, madam. Annie told me there were several motors making their way through the snow. It's late now and cook's swearing about the dinner getting too dry. Ring, ring. I won't answer it. Ring, I ring. say not. <sighs> Hello, what is it? Yes, yes, Mrs. Tapper. Yes, Mrs. Tapper. You must come. We've prepared for you. Yes. For eight of you. Your daughter told my daughter about your house guests, and we were delighted to have them. But now we're set for you. But every plate is set. But your daughter was quite right. It wasn't an imposition at all. But you must come now. Of course my daughter had authority to invite the guests of, oh, oh it isn't at all a big number. There's room. The table is all set. But I beg of you, but, but my dear, you are not imposing. Oh, but how foolish of you to take that stand. Why, my dear, my dear. <sighs> now, what do you think of that? Mr. Mrs. Tupper is perfectly furious that Ellen for telling you about the house guests. And she says that Ella has no tact and that nothing would induce her to bring eight when we invited six. So she's leaving Ella and Henry at home. Only six are coming. Remove two plates, Dunham, or 12 after all. But if you leave at 12, father can't sit at the end. I shall go mad. I'll never entertain again. Never, never. People ought to know whether they're coming or not, but they accept and regret and regret and accept. They drive me wild. 
world. Oh, this is my last dinner party. My very last. A fiasco, an utter fiasco. When I had planned everything so beautifully. Now shall I seat them? How shall I seat them? If I put Mr. Tupper here and then Mrs. Conley there, and then Mrs. Tupper has to sit next to her husband. If I want Mr. Morgan there, oh, it's impossible. I might as well just put their names in a hat and draw them out at random. Oh, never again. I'm through, through with society, with parties, with friends. They'll miss my entertainments. They'll wish they had been more considerate. After this, I'm going to go live for myself. I'm going to go be selfish and hard and unsociable. And I will drink my liquor myself instead of offering it gratis to the entire town. I'm through. Through with men like Oliver Farnsworth. I don't care how rich they are, how influential they are, how important they are. They're nothing without courtesy and consideration. Business. Off on a train. Nonsense. They didn't want to come. Didn't want to meet my smart, pretty girl. Didn't want to marry her. Well, he's not good enough for you. Don't you marry him. Don't you dare marry him. I won't let you marry him. Do you hear? If you try to elope or anything like that, I'd break it off. Yes, I would. Oliver Farnsworth will never get recognition from me. He is beneath my notice. I hate Oliver Farnsworth. Dunham enters with a note on a silver plate. A note from Mr. Farnsworth, madam. Oh, a note from Mr. Farnsworth? Yes, madam. There are two strange gentlemen in the lower half. They're, they presented their letter. He said he was the secretary. All the other guests are upstairs in the drawing room, madam. I counted 12 in all, including you and Mr. Pringle and Miss Elaine. But the other two gentlemen downstairs, madam, are waiting for your answer. The one gentleman's face looked very familiar, madam, but I just can't place him although I'm sure I've seen his face somewhere. Seen his face somewhere? Oh, my goodness, Elaine. It's the Prince of Wales. It's the Prince of Wales. The secretary said you cut off the telephone or Central disconnected you. He was about to tell you that Mr. Farnsworth knew that the blizzard had prevented his highness from keeping an engagement way uptown. Prince of Wales is sitting in my lower hall, waiting for me <laughs> to ask him for dinner. Then we'll be 13 again. There's the secretary, miss. He is his bodyguard. Certainly the secretary, Elaine. Oh, we shall be 14 at dinner. Serve the cocktails, Dunham. The guests may sit anywhere they choose, and I shall bring the prince in with me. But mother, wasn't it nice of Oliver Farnsworth to send in a prince in his place? Oh, didn't I always say that Oliver Farnsworth was the most considerate of men? I think I shall like Mr. Farnsworth. Oh, silly child. It's too late to like Mr. Farnsworth. It's time now to like the prince. I always manage somehow to be the most successful of hostesses. Thank God for the blizzard. And the curtain falls. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this reading of the play 14 by Alice Gerstenberg. And thank you again to Tamara Miller and Leslie Hinosa, two of my colleagues here at Arlington Public Library, for joining me today. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.